Verse number 16, uh, we will look at the NIV version of, of that text. And it reads this way, in the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And we want to focus on the first part of the text where it says, in the same way, let your, amen. And we want to focus on those two words, let your, amen, amen. to let your, praise God. Father God, we thank you for this mighty word today that, God, you will bring forth. Give us ears, Lord, that we might hear and Eyes, God, that we might see, that we might behold your glory. Let this word fall on good soil in our hearts, where it may grow and produce good fruit. It is in Christ's name that we pray, and let the people of God say together, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Let your, let your, look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, neighbor. Let, your. let your, praise God, praise let God. your, Amen. As, as kingdom seekers, and we have been focusing on the whole subject of this year uh, with our theme, kingdom seekers. And as kingdom seekers, God has called us to let our light so shine before others. And, and, and we must understand that when we gave our life to Jesus Christ and we became regenerated and born again, it was at that moment in our lives that the Spirit of God dwelt within us. Amen. The, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, at that moment you are saved. And it is at that moment that we made a confession to Jesus Christ and, and, and we accepted him as Lord of our life. It was at that moment that we received the Holy Spirit in our lives. And when we received the Holy Spirit in our lives, then within us was the light of Christ that dwells within us. But brothers and sisters, we cannot assume though that because we do churchy things that the light of Christ is shining bright within us. It is all about being in the right relationship with Him. You, you can be in the church but not in the right relationship. And if you are not in the right relationship, then the light of Jesus Christ is not shining within you. We, we make some assumptions that because we go to church that somehow the light of Jesus will shine bright within our lives. And, and, and somehow we have made the determination that, that going to church meant right relationship. You can be in the church but not in the right relationship. And if you're not in the right relationship, then the light of Jesus Christ will not shine in your life. And I like what the Jesus says in the text. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men and women. Amen. He said, let your. It is a personal invitation by Jesus Christ for us to let our light so shine before others. He wants us to focus on us. He wants us not to focus on anybody else, but he wants us to focus on us. If our light is shining in the midst of darkness, then wherever we go, then we bring the light of Christ in the midst of darkness. He said, focus on yourself. Make sure that in your walk with me, that I am inside of you. And if I'm inside of you, then the light of Jesus will shine bright in your life. He said, focus on yourself. Look at yourself and ask yourself whether or not the light of Jesus is shining bright within you. Not that you are the pastor of the church. Not that you sing in the choir. Not that you are a musician. Not that you attend church every Sunday. Not that you are an usher. But does the light of Jesus shine bright within your life. As disciples of Christ, we must focus on our walk with God. And God wants us to walk in such a way as kingdom seeker that the light of Christ shines bright within us. Notice what Jesus said. There are three things in this text we want to take out and then we'll let you go. Number one in the text, he says, praise God, we must let our light 
light shine before others. Amen. Jesus called himself the light of the world. John called Jesus the light that is the light. When you are born of God, the light of Jesus will shine in you. And it is evident in your action. Your action ought to reflect that Jesus is inside of you. So that when you love in the right way, then your love is the light of Christ within you. When you forgive in the right way, then the light of Jesus shines bright within you. When we have compassion on people, amen, then the light of Jesus shines bright within us. When our attitude is his attitude, then the light of Christ shines within us. When our words are his words, then the light of Jesus shines bright within us. When our deeds are his deeds, then the light of Jesus shines bright within us. So, so God said, let, let your light so shine before others. He said other people ought to be a witness to the fact that the light of Jesus shines bright within you. If you're the only person testifying that the light of Jesus shines in you and nobody else sees the light in you, then there's something wrong. Other people ought to say that they see the light of Jesus shining bright within you. So they become a testimony that Jesus lives within you. He said, Kenny, you gotta let everybody see. You gotta let everybody see that you have been born again. Eric, you gotta let everybody see that the light of Jesus shines bright within you. Barbara, you gotta let other folks see that Jesus is in you because when the light of Jesus shines amen, in amen. you, then other folk will be a witness. Amen. amen. There'll be a witness, amen. You want somebody to witness to the fact that the light of Jesus shines bright within you. You don't want folk to say that the only time the light shines is on Sunday, amen. When, when Harrison is in church, but when Harrison leaves church, the light of Jesus is not shining bright within him. So let your light so shine before others. And then the text says, number two, that they may see, praise God, your good deeds. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I, I like what it says. It says for we are God's workmanship. That means God is working on us. Amen. That God has produced who we are today. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Amen. That, that, that we are God's workmanship to do what? To do good works. Amen. And, and, and then it says, what God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. When we are giving from our hearts, the Bible says, when our motives are right, when we're giving from our hearts, the Bible says, that is a good deed. Amen. When, when, when we allow the love of Jesus to shine bright from within our hearts, then the Bible says that is a good deed. It, it doesn't matter what other folk think about the fact that you want to love like Jesus loved. The Bible says when we love, that is a good deed. And when we have compassion on people. Well, one of the things that I struggle with sometimes is having the compassion of Christ. Amen. But because sometimes I want to deal with people, you know, in, in a way that's not always Christ-like. Amen. And the Bible says that we ought to have compassion on other folks. Sometimes I don't put myself in their shoes, amen. So I don't have the kind of compassion for them as I ought to have for them. You know, like the compassion Jesus has for us. And the, the fact that you can think about yesterday and on Friday and all of last week, all of the stuff that you did that, 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 that was not in line with the word of God. Just think about the things that we did that would be considered sin. But yet we do that week after week after week after week, month after month, year after year, but yet God still has compassion on us. Amen. God didn't cut out the faults of the blessings because of what we did last week. Amen. But the fact that this morning we got up, God had compassion on us. God said, we ought to have compassion on others. We, we ought to be willing to help people. And when we give up ourselves to help people, the Bible says that is a good deed. Because God helps us. 
The, the, the fact that, that I'm here today is, is a testimony to the fact that, that God has helped me. And, yes, it is. You know, in, in, in my time of need, God has helped me. Amen. The, the fact that, that I was able to make it from my house to the church house today yes. was a testimony yes. that God helped me in the midst of all this. Life. God helps us. Yes, he does. And the Bible says that we ought to help others as mm. God has helped us. And when we help others, God said, that is a good deed. Yeah. When we volunteer, you, you, you see, you are not to get paid for everything you do for Christ. That's right. Come, come on, hey, amen, amen, amen. Because what did you pay him right. for all that he did for you just today? I'm not talking about last week, but everything that he did for you just today. You didn't have to pay anything because you know why? Yes. Because yes. he already paid it all for us. Amen. When he died on Calvary's cross, he already paid it all. We ought to volunteer our services to do things to help humanity to make this world a better place. And when I serve, and I decide that I'm going to make the world a better place, you know, if I make my home a better place, then I'm making the world a better place. Yes. When I make my neighborhood a better place, then I'm making the world a better place. Don't confuse good deeds with just going to church and going to Bible study. Amen. 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 See, so sometimes we confuse that, that when I come to church, I get my money to the church, or I go to Bible study, that that's a good deed. Jesus said, you got to do more than that. Yes. When you're volunteering yourself to help others, to do things in the community, to make others better. The Bible said that is a good deed. When you set an example by your lifestyle, that is a good deed. Because God, the Bible says we ought to set an example for others. Jesus is our example so that when we set an example for others, then that is a good deed. And then what are you willing to sacrifice because when we sacrifice for others, that is a good deed. Listen, it should not always be about us. Yes. You know that the focus of our walk with God is just on us. But the Bible said we ought to be willing to sacrifice. What can I give of myself to, to make things better for somebody? And what can I give of myself to make the kingdom of God better? What, what can I sacrifice for the sake of Jesus Christ? And, and then the final part, and we will take communion, is that when we let our light shine before others, and then we do good deeds. Jesus said, then we bring glory to God. Yes. And in the book of Ephesians, chapter 17, and verse 17, Ephesians 3, verse 17, it said, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. It says, whatever you do, in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. When we submit to God in all things, not, not just some things, but when I submit my life to God in all things, the Bible says, when I depend on God, and when I give control of my life to God, when I bow on my knees and I submit to the will and the authority of God, yes. then the Bible yes. says, I bring glory to God by my submission to God. Then I, I say that He truly is Lord of my life because I'm willing to submit to God. Not my will, Lord, but let God He said, Father, let this come pass from me. But then he said, but not my will, yes. but let thy will be done. Yes. When we yes. submit to God, then we bring God glory. And not only are we called to submit to God, but, but sometimes 
we are called to suffer for Christ. Because being a Christian is not all pie in the sky theology. Amen. Amen. It is not all blessings and it's not all prosperity. But there are times when we must bear our cross. Yes. Because when we submit to the will of God and do what God has called us to do, sometimes God calls us to bear a cross. Not for us, but for Him. Are we willing to suffer for the sake of Christ? Are we willing to go through some things for Christ? Are we, are we willing to be ridiculed and sometimes talked about for the sake of Christ? Because I do it God's way. Everybody else don't see it that way. So my name may be built and scarred, but we have to be willing to suffer for the sake of Christ. Because whatever we suffer for Him, He yes. will bless us for whatever we are prepared to go through for the sake of Christ. I may have to give up some stuff in my life. I may have to sacrifice some stuff in my life. There's a thing that I wanted in my life that I may not have, but I'm prepared to do it. I'm prepared to suffer for the sake of Christ. And then I must be willing to be content with what God has given me. God, I'm not asking for whatever's outside of your will for me. But God, if you put me right here, God, I must be content, God, to stay where you put me at, God, with where you bless me at, God. I must be content. I must not always be looking in somebody else's house or what somebody else has. But God, help me to be content, God. Yes. With what you have blessed me with. It might not be the house that I wanted, but Lord, I'm content. It might not be the car that I wish for, but, but I'm content. It might not be the job and the salary that I wanted, God, but I'm content because there's somebody that does not have a salary. There's somebody that does not have a child. There's somebody that does not have a roof over their head. There's somebody else that may not have the activities of the limb. So God, I'm content where I am. I'm content, Hallelujah. God, where you bless me at. God, I'm content. God, where you put me. God, I'm content. And then, finally, when we praise God with our mouths. Yes. We bring God the glory. See, we ought to be willing to praise God with our mouths. And every time we praise God with our mouths, we, we bring God glory. And you know there was so much, even on this snowy day, when, when, when I woke up this morning, I seen all of the snow out there, but yet I so much to thank God for and, and I shouldn't have been focused on the snow but, but I should have been focused on him who woke me up this morning and started me on my way so, so I should have been able to give God some praise and, and to give God some glory and to give God some praise God is good yeah. yes, he is. Oh, yes he's good to yes, me so the Bible said when I praise him with my mouth I give God glory